Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Thursday, July 20, 2023. The House of Representatives on Wednesday approved the addition of over $14 billion to the national budget to make payments under the Public Sector Compensation Review. This pushes the budget up to $1.036 trillion. The distribution is outlined in the second supplementary estimates for the current 2023-2024 financial year, which was tabled in the House on Tuesday by Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark. He says $8.9 billion will go towards compensation restructure and $5.6 billion is earmarked for loans to public bodies. The second supplementary estimate therefore provides for an overall increase of $14.5 billion in the financial year 23-24 expenditure estimates, which, which will be financed from an est estimated $9 billion higher than program revenue flow and utilization of prior year cash balances, cash balance, cash resources to finance the public body loans. The central government spend for the fiscal year is now estimated at $1.06 trillion, up from $1.021 trillion. The first supplementary estimates for public bodies' revenue and expenditure was also approved on Wednesday. Farmers whose production have been impacted by the drought affecting the island are to benefit from an additional $104 million in support from the government. The money is being provided by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining and follows a $202 million allocation in March of this year. Portfolio Minister Floyd Green made the announcement during a statement to the House of Representatives on Wednesday. To address the challenges of water scarcity and drought caused by climate change, we've initiated a comprehensive program for the trucking of water to farm in communities. This program aims to provide temporary relief by delivering water to areas where access to irrigation is limited. $10 million is allocated to provide irrigation drip kits for some farmers, and another $8 million will be used to truck water to farmers in need. Three water trucks will also be procured at a cost of $48 million to support these activities. Measures are also being put in place to ensure long-term water security for farmers. We're going to be helping to desilt reservoirs, conducting, constructing check dams and implementing soil conservation techniques and importantly rehabilitating catchment areas so that we can increase their water holding capacity, improve water quality and enhance resilience. We have identified $15 million to rehabilitate catchment areas across Jamaica. In addition to these interventions, the Agriculture Ministry will be providing $20 million to purchase vegetable seeds, as this area of the sector has been hardest hit by the drought. Another $3 million will finance the procurement of mulch for use in conserving soil moisture, reducing weed growth and maintaining soil temperature. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is urging Jamaicans to remain vigilant and take precautions to protect themselves and others as the country experiences a continued increase in COVID-19 cases. 227 COVID-19 cases have been recorded in the past week, representing a 290% increase over the previous week's figures. The weekly positivity rate was 22.7%. As of July 18, Jamaica has recorded a total of 155,705 confirmed COVID-19 cases and 3,588 related deaths. The ministry is also reporting an increase in weekly admissions for lower respiratory tract infections or pneumonia, which it attributes to COVID and sporadic cases of influenza B and influenza A. COVID-19 isolation and general hospital occupancy levels have also increased over the past week. Currently, there are 120 patients in hospital isolation across the country, 55 of whom are confirmed positive and 65 are suspected cases of COVID-19. There are currently 22 moderately ill and two severely ill patients, but no critically ill patients in hospital at this time. As the ministry continues to monitor the uptick in cases, Jamaicans are being urged to take the necessary precautions. Our message continues to be if you are vulnerable, if you are in doubt, if you are concerned, see a doctor and there are infection prevention control mechanisms that are standard operating procedure. The mask wearing, the sanitizing, the avoiding of crowds, particularly if you fall in the vulnerable category. The over 65s, the people with underlying conditions, cancers, that sort of thing, then you clearly become more vulnerable than, than most, and of course, frontline workers. 
The health minister was addressing this week's post-cabinet press briefing at Jamaica House. The proposed members of the Sexual Harassment Tribunal is to go before Cabinet for approval next week Monday. Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport Olivia Grange gave that update during a statement to the House of Representatives on Tuesday. The Sexual Harassment Protection and Prevention Act 2021 outlines that a 14-member sexual harassment tribunal be established as an appropriate dispute resolution mechanism for investigating allegations and administering penalties to offenders. Minister Grange says the members will be announced once Cabinet has indicated its approval. Eligibility criteria to serve on the tribunal must entail professional qualifications and extensive experience in roles such as attorneys at law for four members, mediators for four members, and gender affairs, mental health, employer representation, and labor relations for the remaining six members. The Sexual Harassment Tribunal has jurisdiction for hearing complaints and resolving disputes related to the law. Due to the lack of structure or workplace policy to address complaints of sexual harassment, individuals who make these complaints often find themselves being adversely treated. They may be overlooked for promotion, branded as troublemakers, transferred from their department, or in some cases terminated. The Act contemplates the provision of a specialized adjudicatory setting similar to the Industrial Disputes Tribunal, which would be accessible to persons alleging sexual harassment in institutions. Its goal would be to ensure fair and expeditious settlements. Within the next two months, government will be advertising the post for a Chief Information Officer, CIO, to support the establishment of the ICT Authority. Minister with Oversight for Skills and Digital Transformation, Dr. Dana Morris-Dixon, says the hiring of a national CIO is critical to the process of increasing the use of technology in government. Among the expected outcomes are improved efficiencies and the introduction and streamlining of new systems. EGOV has been doing a fantastic job with limited resources in terms of holding this down, and it is envisioned that... Um, members of the eGov team will move into this new entity, but it will be a completely new entity that will be built out with the kind of skill sets that we need. And we're very much advanced in terms of or um, looking at the structure. We've been working with the Minister of Finance um, on that structure. And so that is to come during the course of this year. Dr. Maurice Dixon was speaking at this week's post-Cabinet press briefing at Jamaica House. And finally, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, is discounting recent media reports of a diplomatic row between Jamaica and the United States. According to the minister, the governments of both countries continue to enjoy strong and positive diplomatic relations. Senator Johnson-Smith points out that in accordance with diplomatic practice and within the ambit of its constitution, Jamaica grants privileges and immunities to incoming diplomats, their staff and families, to either reside in or visit the country. She says all requests made to the Foreign Affairs Ministry are considered within this context, and members of staff from both countries continue to reside and work in each other's territory and are expected to observe the laws of their host country. Minister with Responsibility for Information Robert Morgan read the Foreign Affairs Minister's statement during Wednesday's post-Cabinet press briefing. The people-to-people -people relations between Jamaica and the United States have been a most successful era of cooperation and we look forward to their continuation. There is no diplomatic spat or, or as the media reported, diplomatic row between Jamaica and the United States as we continue to enjoy a strong and positive diplomatic relations. The minister notes that similar sentiments have been echoed by the United States. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.